Hello, buddy, Sam here, engineer, MBA, and investor. And in today's video, I wanna talk about the 10th year. It's the 10 year anniversary for, for CRISPR-Cas9 Pepe Apier published by Jennifer Downa and Dr. Shapansi. I wanna talk about all of that here in this video. So this is the article, guys, what you're seeing on the screen. This was published basically 10 years ago, officially today. And its title has a programmable dual RNA guided DNA endonuclease in adapted bacterial immunity. And you can clearly see here a couple of names here, which obviously Dr. Downa and Dr. Chaplancy being the most recognizable here names. But there's also uh, Genek here, Dr. Genek here. This this person here was actually mentioned in uh, Isaacson book. If some of you read it, so you have a whole chapter on this gentleman there. Uh, and obviously, there were a couple of other individuals here involved with getting this paper out there. Just as a reminder, as the courts ruled a few months ago, this paper was not necessarily the first paper to talk about CRISPR-Cas9 on human cells. Of course, that is from Dr. Zhang and his team uh, just about nine years ago or so on. Although uh, Dr. Downer and the team there published a paper just a few weeks after officially got it published, I think the whole book goes into it. I'm not going to bore you guys into it, the book from Isaacson, but they go over the whole race. It was basically a race at that point. But this paper is officially the first one, and this paper led to Dr. Downer and Dr. Chapancia winning the Nobel Prize in 2020. If you guys remember, in late 2020, it was announced that two Nobel Prize winners would be Dr. Downer and Chapancia, Dr. Chapancia. Unfortunately, Dr. Zhang did not win a Nobel Prize there. Uh, for his paper in 2013, but a lot of people expect that he may end up winning uh, something in the near future. Uh, we'll see where that goes with that. Uh, but this is really great news. I think this is amazing, guys. I mean, we've come uh, such a long way. I mean, a lot of people forget it's only just been 10 years, you know, although, you know, there's a lot of things that have happened under those 10 years. Um, it's just 10 years, you know, when you think about TCP slash IP network, those have, been, those have been around for decades, right? Think about all the layers of complexities that were developed on top of that type of network, right? Then think about, you know, Web 1.0, 1.2.0, and now, I guess, 3.0, whatever you want to call it these days. So, you know, we, you know, the whole technology space is always increasing, but you need to give it more than just 5, 8, 10 years, right? You need to give it 15 years, 20 years, even decades, right? That's how you develop a whole new technology that was never developed, never explored in the past. And now today it's being used on humans, therapeutics purposes, like we've seen with numerous programs that we've been covering extensively in the recent years. So this is great news. Uh, of course, if you guys are curious about this paper, you can find it everywhere there. I'll, I'll try to link it in the description there, but it's an amazing paper, amazing story. And of course, where we are today, I, I thought it was uh, appropriate to sort of talk about yesterday's video. Well, it wasn't yesterday. I, I made no video yesterday, but two days ago, I made a video on New York Times covering CRISPR titling as Learning to Rewrite the Code of Life. This was published just a few days ago. So I made that video and I thought... Uh, today, you know, as I was reading this news that broke out on Twitter and Reddit about how it's the officially 10 years, I look back at where we are today and, you know, you see the New York Times now talking about rewriting the code of life. You see Isaacson's, uh, Walter Isaacson's book there uh, talking about it. You see Dr. Downa appearing on, on Bloomberg and so on. You see all these companies, amazing companies publishing amazing data. And then you see these private companies like Mammoth, Sherlock and so on sort of preparing prime medicine, preparing for them to be the next generation of genome editing companies or CRISPR companies. So uh, lots of things that have been, happened in the last 10 years. I think, you know, the most notable one, in my opinion, is the data for CTX001. I think that has solidified everything you see in these research papers. I mean, it's, it's amazing to see a research paper like this published. That's how it starts. Uh, but, you know, I think it goes beyond that. I think we as investors, as investors of public companies, traded companies uh, in the American company, in this case, and the stock market there, uh, we're interested in how these companies are faring. I mean, as much as these research papers can help you, your investing thesis and so on, ultimately, there's no way to, for you to invest in a company if there's no company that exists. 
obviously CRISPR Therapeutic leading the market share with CRISPR-based therapies and having an amazing program like CTA001. Then you have companies like NTLA there with the NTLA 2001 with in vivo approach. And then you have Caribou trying to tackle the CAR T cells with their child and his RDA technology. So amazing things are happening in this place. Amazing things are happening. But of course, we're going to have to see where this leads us, uh, where the next 10 years lead us. Let me know what you guys think, of course, in the comments below. Like always, thank you so much for watching. I am in Montreal this week, so hopefully you guys appreciate this new setting for a couple of videos here. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and have a beautiful Wednesday. Thank you.